Haku, welcome to Red Rocks. I'm Nikki Sandoval, your host, and today Red Rocks with the legendary musical tradition, Red Bone. Hello, Hi. gentlemen, how are you? What's <laughs> up? Well, I'd like to hear each of your names and where you're from first before we talk. Hi, nice to know you. I'm Steve Royball, drummer. Uh, George, I want to know you. George, the show, the keyboard player. <laughs> I'm Raven Hernandez. I'm from Los Angeles, California. And I'm uh, founder of the group Pet Vegas and leader and vocalist. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just Welcome. Kidding. I know we're the Mercedes. <laughs> we're great. Just to, we're just so happy to have you all here. Thank you. I know that the band Red Bone has been around for more than 30 years, oh, yeah. but I know you've all been playing music for more than that. How'd you get your start, Pat? Uh, with uh, the band? Well, f originally my grandfather was a musician. Mm -hmm. He played for many years. He played Zydeco, t uh, Texacana music, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a guitar and they used to play on Friday nights. Everybody would bring him with a beer and, you know, and stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, and party. And, and he'd be drinking his tequila and playing that guitar. And, you know, I kept it. And I'd sit there and watch and see how he, he'd finish that bottle and, 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 and still be able to play, you know. Mm -hmm. Couldn't believe it. So I said, Grandpa, can I? And I, so I just stood up. I guess I went into shock or something. I was going to, and said, uh, can I have the guitar? And he says, no. Mm -hmm. He says, but when you're old enough and you can reach it and, and up here on the, on the dresser and you can, it's yours. Uh -huh. So I stood on a chair and took it. All right. <laughs> Eight years old. Yeah. Great. And learned. And then after that, it was all music. Mm -hmm. you know? It's been music all my life. It's, uh, it's been a real, real good trip for me. Did you ever imagine that your music would take you all over the world? Yes, I did. I, always, I, I had this picture in my mind. I always uh -huh. saw it. I, I felt it, you know, I, I felt mm -hmm. it. And I, and, I, and, I, and I just knew, you know, I knew I, I, it was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I saw it already you know, before it happened and uh, I just pursued it, you know, and it's just, it just never gave up. And I'm still not giving up. That's great. And what would you talk, what would you advise uh, up and coming native musicians today? You know, we're living in a world that, that's yeah. challenging and we're facing all kinds of issues and distractions and threats to our survival as a people. Yeah. What would you tell the next generation of native musicians coming up? Any of you? Yeah. Well, they, they will survive mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they, you, know, you just have to keep trying mm -hmm. and don't give up. And go to school if possible. Yeah. Right. Go to school. Yeah. Education is definitely. You know, information in this business is the most important thing because yeah, you feel have like to know what's going on with right. with the industry. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to be a, a person that's involved in it all your life, you have to kind of. And you learn by out. doing. You know, you keep playing it, keep at it. The, you know, it, we're, we're all learning every day. We're still learning something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And I feel, I feel that the, 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 the philosophy behind that is that life is a big, long line, or, or just one huge line, mm -hmm. and all of us are standing in line. Right. And and it, eventually, one, all of us will be at the head of the line mm -hmm. first. But if you get out of line, you got to go all the way back to the end of the line. Mm -hmm. It's not all over again. That's my love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there was a funny story I heard before we came um, about a visit to England. Oh, that story. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that, Pat. Oh, uh, we were, we, were uh, we, did the, we played for the Royal Albert Hall, which okay. is, you know, you don't get into the Royal Albert Hall unless you're like Elvis Presley or somebody, right? Uh huh. So here they, 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 they we, we said, oh, we're going to play at this place called the Rainbow, which is a big theater, right? No, they said, you're playing at the Royal Albert Hall. The Queen wants to see you guys. Mm -hmm. She wanted to see the Red Indians, right? Command performance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I said, all right, fine. So we did the show with Argent, the, guys, uh, the group that had uh, Hold Your Head High. Mm -hmm. uh, they were trying to tell us something. <laughs> <laughs> so we did the show. And after the show, we all went running off to the dressing room. People are screaming, encore. And, 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 and you know, I, I'm, I bend over to take off my shoes, my moccasins. And I'm leaning, and I got my back to the door. And I hear the door open, people walk in, a whole bunch of people rushed in, and, and I hear a voice say to me, uh, uh, wonderful show, young man. And I, and I say, hey, thanks, babe. And it was the Queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> and and she, she looked, and I, I was so embarrassed, because everybody went, <gasps> you know, uh -huh. like, like they, you could hear a pin drop, right? So I just stood there staring at her, like, what else could I say? After uh -huh. I put my foot in my mouth, right? 
So I'm, so I'm looking at her like this. She says, you know what? It's refreshing. It's refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> the babe said it was refreshing. I don't think anybody ever so called it that. <laughs> Mother babe. Yeah. Right. So what's on the horizon? I mean, you have so many years of history behind you as musicians, as artists. Uh, what's next for you? Oh, we've got a, we're working on a CD now. Okay. And we're getting ready to go in the studio and start a brand new CD. Mm -hmm. We just had a CD released on Sony on the Legacy label mm -hmm. called The Essential Redbone. Okay. Uh, we have uh, two other projects that we're working on as a group uh, for Europe, for, for, to be, have released in Europe. Uh, and Ronnie just did some work on his own. Okay. Yeah, I have a solo uh, CD project that I did. Okay. It was just a side project. I'm mm -hmm. with the band. Uh -huh. And uh, it was just something I've always wanted to do, and uh, I had a bunch of songs that I had written and stuff, and uh, like for family members and just personal songs. So I put them on a CD, okay. and uh, I actually uh, entered it in the. Uh, well, I was nominated for a Native American Music Award. Great! So it was actually a competition. Speaking that, of uh, Native American Music Awards, yeah, you got something to say about that, huh? Yeah, well, I, I'd like to know, um, you've been in this business for so long and you've opened so many doors for uh -huh. so many people, and I was curious as to what the level of acknowledgement has been for you as a group of musicians well, on a national and international level. I think where, where you're, wherever you're at, I think New York is really always really accepting, and, uh -huh. and um, the East Coast you know, is always really accepting. Sometimes there's just certain spots, but, but most of all, they always like the music. I mean, the record yeah. company, let me tell you, at this point here in time, we, like you said, we've opened a lot of doors, yes. and you know, uh, we, we we stepped out in, on on the and we stepped out on the fringe of insanity. We mm -hmm. stepped out on the, we went out on a limb, yes. and we were the only ones out there. Mm -hmm. Nobody. This is at the time when nobody wanted to say anything. Nobody wanted to step out. People were getting hurt, and people right. were getting arrested. And, uh, and 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 if you stepped out and said anything, they'd call you a militant. And they'd chase uh -huh. you down and beat you or hang you. So it's, you know, but we stepped out there and we did it. You know, we went out there and we told it just like it was. We didn't try to. We didn't write a whole bunch of love songs. Mm -hmm. We it's told it like it really was in this country. And you know, and the acknowledgement for that, for, for for putting your 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 life on the line and putting your whole career, mm -hmm. uh, has been zilch. There's been mm. very little. Okay, to, mm -hmm. to to be honest with you. Uh, like like I I'm with the, on Dick Clark's advisory board right. for uh, homeless musicians right mm -hmm. I'm on this board and for ten years I kept saying Dick uh, you got to put a Native American category in the Grammys uh -huh. American Music Awards come on you got to acknowledge the music that you know mm -hmm. our music you know our music with chants and all that's traditional too mm -hmm. it's, tradi it's taking the traditional putting it to uh, to the contemporary which right. is another just walking out on another limb right because yes. mm -hmm. people could have said we hate it we don't like it right but everybody loved it you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now, I've been. I was telling this for ten years. Now, five, ten years later, they, 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 there's a Native American category there, and and I haven't had one. No one said, "Hey, man, you guys deserve an award. You guys just for the hell of it." Mm -hmm. You know. You didn't mention it. No, no. You know. Everybody else. Is, I see all these people getting awards. That you know, guys, actors, and people that really never did anything. I mean, they they, they never went out there. And, and were in, in broke the, the ground. They, they never yeah. were in the war zone like I was. We played at the Washington Monument for 500,000 people mm -hmm. uh, during the, the uh, end of war. Yeah. You know, and, Alcatraz. And uh, we played mm -hmm. at Alcatraz. We played at uh, at, the, at the St. Paul um, uh, trials with Marlon Brando mm -hmm. and and Russell Means and all those. Yeah, and nobody. You know. Yeah, you're bringing up an interesting point yeah. about the role of music and art yeah. in um, the perpetuation of culture and in activism. Yeah. You know, using our we're creativity, using way. right, to give voice to yeah. the struggles of yeah. Native people. We didn't try to go beat anybody up or, right. or put anybody down. What we did it, we did it through our music, and we did it with a loving, caring, uh, mm -hmm. with a hopeful, you know, yeah, and you've optimistic talked, view. You've talked about uh, the role of music mm -hmm. in political activism. Mm -hmm. What are some of the causes right now that you're supporting? Um, any benefits that you've Leonard. been doing lately? Leonard Peltier. Leonard. Would you like to speak about that? Yeah, just we feel that he, he was put away um, in an unjust situation mm -hmm. uh, without no real proof and mm -hmm. uh, you know somebody needs to, to take a look at what's going on in the government and uh, realize that there's a lot of people in prisons right now that don't belong there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's a big problem. Okay. Not just with Leonard's case, but with throughout the country. Right. And it seems to happen to indigenous people uh, quite frequent. Yeah. They and just don't have the, the financial support or the legal counsel. Right. For example, so right now in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. they're, 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 you know, you remember the, the land rush in Oklahoma mm -hmm. where, where, where they, everybody got in horses, horseback, and they dished out the Native American land, mm -hmm. the, the, the tribal land, and just, just gave it away. 
plots, you know. And so they, they call that a great time in history. So what they're going to do is they're going to build a big, huge monument uh, honoring that day, and I think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And there's a big movement now to stop that, you know, because I don't think that's right. You know, uh, you know, they just took the land, gave it away. They really here, go help yourself, and, and now they're giving a, a building monument to that. Yeah, Steve, you had mentioned you, and this I heard this coming from each of you, but you had mentioned the, the importance of education. Yes. And talk a little bit about um, the role of your music in education and what it does for for Native people and non-Native people. Well, you know, they took music out of the schools and most of the public schools and mm -hmm. a lot of the private schools unless you had the money to pay for it. And uh, I think it should be available to every student out there right. who wants to, you know, become a musician or an artist mm -hmm. or whatever it is. You it know. helps with the learning process. You know, it helps right. them to be able to, mm -hmm. uh, to give them a sense of um, you know, social value, mm -hmm. you know, especially mm -hmm. within their own community. Right. And then their, their musical instruments are falling apart, too. They yeah. need new instruments in the schools. Mm -hmm. I've been to a few Indian schools. We did some shows, and I noticed that we support you, you look at yeah. yeah, you look at their equipment, and it's all old, old, 50 years old, 100 years old musical yeah. instruments. What can a viewer <coughs> out there do? If we've got folks watching today, how can they learn more about not only your music, but your work and your history, your legacy? Do you have a website yeah, that we could share through, with the viewers? They can reach us through uh, redbonegroup.com. Redbonegroup.com. Yeah. Okay. And they can reach us through there. Great. And you have a new album and that's... That's out now. Oh, it's out now. It's called The Essential Redbone. Okay. Right. And that's out now. Terrific. Uh, There's 16. 16 total CDs out right now from Redbone. Yeah. 16, 16 CDs. CDs. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one that's being worked on in the that studio. That we're working on now. Okay. Yeah. And that's going to be released? In September. September. Terrific. It'll be number one. It will be number <laughs> one. And you heard it here first. The metamorphosis of Redbone is okay. Believe me when I tell you right now, we'll be back on the charts. All right. Uh, right on. I like the sound of that. <laughs> uh, I hope you'll enjoy this next segment. Redbone is going to treat us to a song. Hi, uh, this is Pat Vegas. This is Ronnie Raven. We're going to do an acoustic song for you that um, co that was co-written uh, with me, uh, a young lady who died and passed away at the age of 35 years old. But she was one of the most prolific writers of all time. She wrote songs like Greatest Love of All, Betcha by Golly Wow, You Make Me Feel Brand New, uh, just from stage to good. The list goes on and on. This, this is the last song she ever wrote before she passed away. And it's a song that I'm very proud to present to you, play for you, that it's, uh, it's uh, her legacy. Sadness, so it's consumed by worldly madness. Is there anyone who knows just who they are? If sometimes I seem astounded, it's because I am surrounded by a sea of people searching for their star. And when I feel it's getting to me, I feel that soft kiss breeze that warms the summer's evening. I feel something sweet caressing me inside. It's the knowledge that there's someone who still needs me. Sometimes I feel surrounded by a thousand people shouting. I close my eyes and wish they'd disappear. Then I turn and look around me in a place and space I find me foreign and I fear. 
that there's no one left to turn to. And like the soft kiss breeze that warms the summer's evening, I feel something sweet caressing me inside. It's the knowledge that there's someone who still needs me.
and the stones in the sand. He's got much more than his heart and his soul in the land. He hears the sound of the cars and the trucks from the highway nearby. He knows the sound of destruction, hear the eagle cry. Hear the eagle, oh, cry, I hear. Hear the eagle, oh, hear it cry. my dream current resident of the white house broken promises broken dreams and he says my dear sweet people i empathize with your cause and then he says something like this i'm gonna do something true i am but they are complicated laws to take my land you try to take my soul you try to take my life you'll never take control you try to take my land you try to take my soul you try to take my life you'll never take control hey We hope you enjoyed that musical treat from the band that sold more than 28 million albums. I'm curious, where are all of you gentlemen from? We didn't talk about what tribes you're from. Well, I was born in L.A., but my parents are from northern New Mexico. Uh, we have Tewa Indian. Mm -hmm. Tewa. Tewa. Mm -hmm. And my family is half Yaki. Mm -hmm. Half Yaki, actually. Mm -hmm. Which half? Uh, the better half. I <laughs> okay, the better. <laughs> Um, I was born in Los Angeles, and the same way my family, my, my dad was Mexican, and his mm -hmm. family was from Guanajuato, mm -hmm. and my mom's family was from uh, Arizona, so mm. we have Navajo. All right. And I'm Yaki Shishon, mm -hmm. from the Nevada Hills, and from the Fresno, Fresno Bay Area, you know. Mm -hmm. And I used, I grew up in the city. We've got a commercial coming on, Healthy Choice, okay. and it's uh, Come and Get Your Love. All right. And get Healthy. 
Okay. Terrific. Promoting uh, education and music and health. arts and culture and rights. good health. Everything. And rights. Terrific. Gotta do it all. Great. <laughs> That's my love. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank you for joining us today here on Red Rocks. Thank you, Don. Very Keep much. on rocking. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to rock till it turns red. Oh, all yeah, right. Red. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us today here on Red Rocks. Until next time, I'm Nikki Sandoval, your host.
Haku, welcome to Red Rocks, a show featuring the finest in native music, arts, and culture. Today I'm really happy to welcome Carlos Reynosa, the renowned actor, model, musician, producer. Hello Carlos, how are you? Very good, especially after that, thank you. So tell me, how are you doing? <laughs> what projects do you have right now happening? Well, I have a new album that's about to be released called Baby Blue, mm -hmm. and I've uh, been on a perpetual tour, mm -hmm. and uh, have a lot of things going on. I'm going to be at San Diego State, actually, this uh, next week, and um, Orange County Pow Wow, and okay. Palmdale Pow Wow, and Ridgecrest Pow Wow. And really? Yeah. So how long have you been on tour? Ooh, I don't know, <laughs> about... 16, 17 years, actually. 16 or like. 17 years? Okay. Yeah, if I don't tour, I don't make money. That's right. <laughs> Not that it's just for that, but, right. you know, if you're staying at home, you know, mm -hmm. kind of hard as an artist. Speaking of home, is that where you <clears throat> first became a musician? It was, yes. Mm -hmm. Singing for rel relatives, you know, mm -hmm. and friends. And how old were you when you started to sing? Well, they tell me I was really little, mm -hmm. that I was always humming along. But I used to have a little transistor radio that was solar powered. Uh -huh. And I used to play outside in the dirt, actually, uh -huh. <laughs> and listen to my radio and sing all the songs. Mm. My mom was very surprised that I could sing every song on the radio. You knew them all. <laughs> knew them all. Could sing like Mick Jagger, or uh -huh. <laughs> The Four Tops, or whoever, yeah, at a very young age, actually. That's wonderful. Yeah. So you were born and you grew up singing. At what point did you pick up a musical instrument? Well, I got my first flute actually at um, Flagstaff Pow Wow mm -hmm. a long, long time ago, but I didn't take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I started late in life. I was always working with mu uh, other musicians at the beginning and writing a lot of lyrics and melodies. Mm -hmm. But I started kind of late playing guitar. Mm. But uh, I should do love it now, that's for sure. That's right. And this uh, new album that you have out, Baby Blue. Baby Blue. Is that featuring your flute playing? It is, actually. It's all flute. Mm -hmm. A lot of different flutes uh, from different makers, actually, too, that have passed on. Mm. It's kind of like a memorial album, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's very special to you, close to your heart. Oh, very much. If, mm -hmm. if anybody has it out there, they can read the little, the little special dedication, actually, to my little sister. Oh. Yeah. If someone wanted to get Baby Blue, what's the best way to get that CD? Well, they could call me directly or they can go to my website, which will probably end up calling me directly anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's yeah. www.carlosreynosa.com. Exactly. I've seen the site and it's wonderful. Oh, it's beautifully done. Oh, thank you. Uh, lots of information about your own history, which is really diverse and interesting and oh, thank you. one of the things that struck me too is you have such diverse roots in so many places culturally mm -hmm. historically uh, I saw that you're Yaqui, mm -hmm. Mexica, Cherokee, exactly. Irish, French, German just like a lot of Americans. That's huh? right, that's <laughs> right. How has that influenced you uh, professionally as an artist? Well it's made me very kind that's for sure, because mm -hmm. if you're a part of everything, you know, you really can't turn your back on anything. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's nice. And especially, you know, doing a lot of things in L.A. because there's so many different people and so yes. many different mm -hmm. tribes here that, you know, it's more open than, you know, traveling across the country where people are a little standoffish more. Mm -hmm. Even though, you know, I've traveled to a lot of the races across the country as mm -hmm. well. And what's the reception been for you as you've traveled throughout Indian country? It's been country? really good, especially after mm -hmm. I start singing or playing. Really? Yeah. So sometimes they're, you know, can be. You know, I am awful light, you know. Mm -hmm. But once they realize this is what I do, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You know, some people hire me just to do that. Some people hire me just to speak, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the universities. Okay. Yeah, it gets a little different point of view, you know, especially right. if you've seen, seen how our people live. Yes. Most people do not. Mm -hmm. You know, they think that, you know, people are having problems in other countries. <laughs> But if you've been to any of the, you know, some of the reses, it's, yes. we're in a, you know, a desperate state in some places, that's, that's right. for sure. The oh. third world is really right it's here right in our here. backyard. That's right. And I noticed on your website, <clears throat> you have a lot of groups listed. You've given very generously of your time, your energy, and your talent to nonprofit organizations, charities, causes. 
Is there one in particular, the list is exhaustive, is there one in particular though that um, is closest to your heart that you've been really active with? Well, all the peoples that I've worked for really are close to my heart, that's for sure, because mm -hmm. so many people are, you know, extinction is forever. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, one of the most gratifying is uh, working uh, with the Wolf Centers that have raised, you know, I've raised mm -hmm. quite a bit of money for them that are reintroducing mm -hmm. wolves, you know, uh, whether it be on the Apache Res or uh, uh, the Nez Perce. Mm -hmm. But this country needs to see that again, because mm -hmm. I know that there's coyotes from coast to coast now. Mm -hmm. That's one reason. Yes, that's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, only, it only used to be in a few states. Mm -hmm. But like anything else that's out of balance, you know, mm -hmm. it's out of balance. Yeah. That's for sure. We're going to have a lot of different types of folks watching the program. And if you had a message to offer to our audience about the state of things in Indian country, something you'd like to convey. Gosh, I wish that we could show it. I wish we could be seen on TV. Mm -hmm. I wish we could uh, let our, our feelings known, mm -hmm. and not just from my point of view, but from from elders' point of view, mm -hmm. people who are land-based, who are still close to that mm -hmm. land. You know, it's, it's very important. Mm -hmm. You know, the American people are always focusing on one thing at a time, one little mm -hmm. thing at a time, and, you know, finding everything out about it, but sometimes it's it's a little bigger than that, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of things to find out, especially about our country. Right. You know, a lot of people here in Santa Barbara or, you know, along the California coast don't know how many Chumash names there are, mm -hmm. whether it be Malibu or Ojai or some of the other places. They That's have no right. idea, mm -hmm. <laughs> not a single idea mm -hmm. about it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And some of the flutes that I play, people don't realize they've been played for thousands of years. And yeah. that's something important. That's right. In fact, everything is so transit and changing very mm -hmm. rapidly. Do you make your own flutes? I don't, actually. Mm -hmm. I really like my fingers. Right. I've got a few flute maker friends, you know, they're like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you need to keep those fingers, I right? I really like to play. Oh, I always okay. like to think that well, the, some of the flute makers who are players as well are making, I'm practicing and getting better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really makes, makes it mm -hmm. possible for me to play a wide variety mm -hmm. of flutes. I know that a lot of flute players are playing certain kind of flutes. Yes. You know, and I'm playing a from you know South America all the way up to the north, mm. you know different kinds. Mm -hmm. Even a California flute that I play that really took me a long time to really get a copy of, mm -hmm. hold a copy of, from the Southwest. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine, Guillermo Martinez, could copy one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, it, is it true that the flute, the indigenous flute in California, for a time was actually outlawed? Well, as I say, it's still outlawed. Hmm. On the books, you know, no different Legally. than maybe a recall mm. on the books. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of things mm -hmm. in the state are unknown, like, you know, the apprentice law. A lot of people don't realize that in, here in California, slavery was abolished in the last state mm -hmm. in the Union. Mm -hmm. If you gave a Indian child that you <laughs> basically, you know, kidnapped from the mountains, a Christian home, you could have servitude until they were 35 years old. And I think that was until about 1908. Mm -hmm. Very recent history. It's very recent history. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so through your music, through your artistry, through your expression, I think uh, you're helping to give voices to that unspoken history that so many people have not heard about. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, especially when it comes to little kids or you know, some people are a little standoffish about some things, but mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people need to hear the truth. At the same time, not blocking them off from things or turning your back on them. Mm -hmm. That's the real key, you know. I think that's why music really can transfer ideas, because mm -hmm. it's done with a little bit of love. Now we'll enjoy a musical selection on the flute by Carlos Reynosa.
and we're dreaming and we're hoping for the people, for the people, for the people, it's for the people. It ain't that bad It'll be alright It ain't that sad No, it ain't that sad Depend on me I'll depend on you We are the people, me and you, yes we are the people, me and you, it'll be alright, it ain't that bad, it'll be alright. Life is for living and living with love. Love is for giving, giving with love. No matter what they say, no, there's nothing better, better than love. No better than It'll be alright It ain't that bad It'll be alright It ain't that sad No, it ain't that sad No, not that and we're wishing and we're coping and we're dreaming and we're hoping for the people it's for the people the people, for the people. Some of the songs that are featured in your video. Yeah, Life, Love, and Earth. That's right, Life, Love, and Earth. And uh, there's one, Follow the Children. Follow the children. Follow yeah. the children. And we have so much to learn uh, from our children. Oh, from our that's young for people. sure. I mean, we can't drink the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some places you can't breathe the air. I right. mean, there's a lot of things to learn from the children because they're the future.
And uh, I know you saw my website, and yes, you know I get almost uh, gosh a hundred emails a day, and a lot mm. of them are little tiny kids. Oh, it really is sweet. Mm -hmm. If I feel badly, I just go and read some, and it lifts you <laughs> up. It really does. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. It really does. Because I, when I was in school, it wasn't the same. You know, there wasn't there wasn't anything that I wanted to see on TV or anybody coming and speaking in front of our class. Mm -hmm. You know, about things I wanted to know about. Mm -hmm. You know? Was that difficult for you growing up, not having um, visible Native role models in it the was, news It was, especially being different, you know. Uh, it, it was difficult, but I think that's what made me an artist. Mm -hmm. And not afraid of what anybody thinks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. if there are other young people out there who want to continue their creative expression, their artistry, what kinds of words would you share with them that might help them along on their path? As an artist. Well, number one, they have to be true to themselves, and if they're worried about what other people think, it's never going to be. Mm. And if they're doing it for somebody else, they mm -hmm. don't have their heart in the right place. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think that's the key, mm -hmm. is to do what they feel mm -hmm. is right, you know? And, um, but to make money at it is a whole different thing, <laughs> that's right. for sure. It's very difficult because there's lots of artists out there, and some people don't recognize their talent. Mm -hmm. And I happen to be one of the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And I feel lucky in that way. Mm -hmm. And what can people <coughs> in our viewing audience do to support Native music and arts and culture? Well, they could be interested in it, number mm -hmm. one. And uh, listen to it mm -hmm. and buy it if they can. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, obviously there's a lot out there. Mm -hmm. But if you're not listening to at least somewhat of your own music, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to disappear, mm -hmm. like language. That's very well said. And you're a new father. I am a new father, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at that smile. You're a new father. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty exciting, except he has no need for me right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> That'll change very, very soon. I hope so. Well, really happy. I need a drummer. You need I a hope drummer. I he likes drums. <laughs>
Hey!